I've prayed and I've prayed and I've prayed and I'm still not getting any better physically. You know, that is the heart cry of millions of people in our world today. They have prayed and prayed and yet they're still no better. And I want you to know there's a reason for that. And today we're going to discuss that reason or at least one of those reasons. So you want to stay tuned. Also, I just want to address those of you that have been writing in with your comments and letting us know that you're being blessed by these episodes. It really is an encouragement to us to know that you're being helped. And so we just encourage you to continue watching and to continue commenting and let us know when the symptoms depart from your body as we've prayed for you and as we've taught you the word. So thank you so much for your support and for your encouragement. Now today we're going to discuss one of the reasons, not the only reason, but a significant reason why perhaps some people have not received the healing that they've been believing for or they think they've been believing for. And the Bible has something to say about that. You know, the devil has given to the church something that is a substitute for faith, which looks and sounds so much like faith that many Christians cannot tell the difference. And this thing that he's given to the church is called mental assent. Now, many people will see what God's word says about health and healing or other subjects as well. And they agree with it. They acknowledge that it's true, but they only are really acknowledging it with their minds. And it never really comes from their spirit or their heart. And that is not going to get the job done. It's with heart faith that we receive from God. Now, Romans chapter 10 and verse 10 says this, For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So we see we receive um, unto righteousness. We believe unto righteousness. We receive by believing. We believe unto righteousness, but also we believe unto healing. We believe unto salvation. We believe unto provision. Whatever it is, it has to be a heart faith or a heart belief. So many may question, well, what exactly is the difference between the mind and the heart? Really, heart is one way of saying it, or we could say the spirit. Well, every human has been created by God to be a three-part being. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 23, it says, May your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we see in this one verse that man is not just a mind and a body. Now, I know that in the psychological world, they recognize two aspects of man. But the Bible is telling us there are three. We have the spirit. You are a spirit. I am a spirit. That's the real person that we are that lives for eternity. We possess a soul. That is our mind, our will, and our emotions. So there are a lot of things in our life that fall under that category. And we live in a body. Our body is our physical house that houses our spirit and our soul. If your mind is agreeing with the word of God, but your spirit is not, then you're not going to receive the benefit of healing or whatever else you're praying for. So you may be asking, well, how can I tell whether I have heart faith or whether I'm just agreeing mentally with the word? Well, here's how you can tell the difference. Mental agreement says, I know God's word is true. I know that God promises me healing, but for some reason, I just can't seem to get it. Uh, I don't understand why this isn't working. Why isn't this working, God? You know, sometimes we've gotten to a place where we've stood for so long and we just get frustrated because it's not changing. And then if we're not careful, we almost take it out on God. Well, why is this not working? Why is this not working? If you're in that state of mind, I guarantee you're not in heart faith, you're in mental assent. And that's not bad to acknowledge that because until we acknowledge the problem, we can't change it. And I don't know about you, but I want to fix the problem if there's a problem and I want to receive my healing. Now, heart faith says if God's word says it's true or it's so, then it's so. I have it now regardless of what I feel in my body, regardless of what I see with my eyes. So real faith says I have it when I cannot see or feel it. Now let's look what Jesus said about this. In Mark eleven twenty three. he said, For assuredly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, You notice he didn't say in the mind, does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done. 
he will have whatsoever he says. Now, notice again, we're believing. We're believing and not doubting in our heart. There's nothing about the mind mentioned in that verse. So we have to take the step of believing before we're going to come to the place of actually knowing that we're healed. The having comes before, I'm sorry, the, the having comes after the believing. The believing comes before the having. Most people want to turn that around. You know, I heard one preacher say, you've got to turn that record over and play the other side. You know, so many times we're saying, well, for instance, I've heard people say this. I'm not getting healed. I've prayed and I've prayed and it's not working. Why is it not working? Well, one indication is you're saying it's not working. If you're saying it's not working, you're really not believing. Because you know what happens? The Bible says that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So one thing you can do is check up on yourself. What do you say regularly? If you're contradicting what God says on a regular basis, that's an indication that you are not yet in heart faith about the situation. But you get into heart faith, of course, through the word of God. You just got to keep hearing it and keep talking it, keep saying it. And eventually that word will get in your heart. And when it's in your heart in abundance and comes out of your mouth, that's when it works for you. You know, I never have been able to receive healing for myself or any of my children over the years without first believing I had it. And once I believe I'm healed, then the situation changes. I don't wait until all the symptoms are gone and then say, hey, I believe it. Hey, I have it. No, you have to say and believe you have it before it changes. I know that this seems very silly to some people. It's not common sense. It's Bible sense. You know, the Bible says that God's thoughts are higher than our thoughts. And so a lot of times, because we're so programmed by a negative world to think and act a certain way, it becomes a habit for us. And then when we hear a higher way, it can almost seem ridiculous at times. But it's only because it hasn't been common to us. God's ways are not ridiculous. They're higher. He has all wisdom. And if he says this is how it works, I think I'm going to believe him and try it his way because my way hasn't worked so well up until now. So we have to choose to believe the higher truth, God's word, in the face of the symptoms in order to change the situation. You know, for example, one time I had the stomach flu. I had symptoms of the stomach flu. It's not a pleasant thing to have. And so, you know, you stay near the bathroom. <laughs> But even though I had those symptoms and I did not deny that I had them, I continued to say what God said about it. I said, Lord, I thank you that by his stripes I was healed. And since I was healed, I am healed. And every time a bout of, of stomach pain would hit me, I would continue to say, Lord, I thank you that I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus. I thank you that these symptoms are disappearing. I refuse to have these symptoms because I believe what the word of God says about this. And do you know, within a short period of time, every symptom disappeared. Now, I could have gotten agreement with the symptoms and catered to that, and it would have just caused it to linger longer than it should have. You know, another thing that I did was instead of just laying in bed and groaning and moaning and complaining, I continued to move around the house and do the things I would normally do if I was well. Because faith is an act. Faith doesn't just lay around and expect God to drop healing out of the sky when you're not cooperating with it. Now, I understand there are situations where maybe you can't get out of bed. Faith will act as far as it can in that present condition. So as long as I'm able to walk and move, and do things, I would continue to do that even though my body's telling me, go lay in bed. It's not a lack of wisdom when you act on the word of God. Now, it may be a lack of wisdom if it goes against what the doctor thinks about the flu. You know, mostly when people get the flu, they're told, drink a lot of liquids, stay in bed, get a lot of rest. Okay, that's natural wisdom, natural sense. But God's wisdom says, if you really believe you're healed, what would you be doing right now? And so that's what we have to do. Now, if you're waiting until you feel better to act like you're better, you've got it backwards. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1 says this, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. The Amplified Classic says this, Faith perceiving as real fact what is not revealed to the senses. So we have these Bible scriptures that show us 
They're aware of senses too. God's aware that you have senses. He created you. But faith will perceive as real fact what's not revealed to your current physical senses. So we have to believe God's word simply because we know he cannot lie, even when it's not evident to our physical senses. You know, Thomas is an example of somebody who refused to believe without actually seeing or feeling. Uh, in John chapter 20, verse 25, it says, The other disciples therefore said to him, said to Thomas, We have seen the Lord. So he said to them, unless I see in his hands the print of the nails and put my finger into the print of the nails and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. So how many know he was being moved by sense knowledge? But and listen, he had all the other disciples telling him this really happened and he still refused to believe. <clears throat> but then later when Jesus appeared to him, Thomas said, oh, my Lord and my God, then he believed now think about this for a moment. We already know how to believe for something we cannot see. Because we believe in the resurrection of Jesus. We believe that he's alive today, even though most of us have never seen him. Why do we believe this? Because the word of God says so. The word is the reason we believe it. Well, in the same way, we can believe we're healed, even though we don't see it or feel it because the word says we're healed. So faith, our faith is not in what we see or feel. Our faith is not in a doctor's report. I mean, certainly they're trying to help us when we go to a doctor. Our faith is to be in what God says. And really, that's all it can be in because faith comes by hearing the word of God. When we're not hearing the word of God, we're really in fear, which is the opposite of faith. But when we get our faith to that point where we get it in the right place, we get it in the right order, then we get the results from the word. In John chapter 20, verse 29, Jesus said to Thomas, Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. So when you believe before you see or, or feel a change, Jesus calls you blessed. Why is that? Because you're going to receive you're going to receive when you believe before you see. And when God, when God says receiving is a good thing, he says you're blessed. <laughs> Amen. So the best way to move out of mental assent and into heart faith, let me just recap this. Uh, we don't want to be guilty of being only in a mental state of agreement. We want this to be in our heart. The best way to get out of mental assent and into heart faith is to spend more time in the word of God. Get a hold of some healing scriptures. Talk those scriptures out loud. Meditate on them day and night. And as you do that, that word will pass from your mind and get down into your spirit where it belongs. And when your heart is full of the word, when there's an abundance of the word, it will start coming out of your mouth as a natural thing. And that's when your faith will work for you. You know, also, I want to encourage you, we provide healing scripture booklets here. Uh, you can either write to us and we'll get one to you, or I believe they're available digitally on our website. And so you can access that information in the comments section. So we encourage you, just get the word, because the word is what changes your life. You know, it's not, it's not a physical man like me or any other preacher that changes your life. It's what we're saying. And what we're saying is God's word. So God is the one that changes your life. And we're thankful for this opportunity to bring this word into your life today, whether you're watching from home or another location through a phone, a computer, a device. We're just thankful that you found this program. And our prayer for you today is that these words are bringing health into your body. I want to pray for you right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for those who are watching that are suffering from sickness and disease. I pray that this word is making a difference in their understanding today that they're realizing if they have been in mental ascent that they need to make a change and get into heart faith and father i pray that as they see this and as they act upon it that healing power would begin to flow into their bodies and change those symptoms into health and healing lord i agree with them today from the top of their head to the soles of their feet for that healing that they long for and we thank you for it lord we know that you're a good god hallelujah now if you do receive your healing please write and let us know that encourages everybody here 
Also, please like and share this video with other people. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Until next time, we want to remind you that God has a plan for your life, and it's so much greater than you know. God bless you.